The festival went down in history, unique to anything else that had gone before, and afterwards there was a new type of young person with a new type of life to live. Eventually uh, we had to sort of create uh, places to live, a lot of tents of course. We built little bamboo huts and A-frames and tree houses and every cow bale was taken up with a body somewhere. So for $200 we sold shares in a community. You didn't have to pertain to any political or religious persuasion, you just had to uh, believe in some chance of creating survival. Alternate is the term they prefer to hippie a recognition of an alternative society with different values, different rules. There's the latest in alternative hardware, a solar panel for electricity, a homemade wind generator to charge the batteries. Pedal power is put to a more pragmatic use. We didn't have electricity, um, just lived uh, incredibly simply. It was, it was back to earth, organic farming. We also used to work naked in the gardens. That, that's changed a lot. You don't sort of see that much these days. But at that time, everybody was naked nearly all the time. We had thought that we were going to settle down on this piece of land and be um, caretakers for the meditation centre and spend the rest of our lives meditating. And then all of a sudden it was building and babies and you know nothing ever quite settled down again after that. So women wanted to have babies at home, and the first ones were so brave. They, and they asked me, as their friend and healer, to come and assist them at the birth, and it had a life of its own. Within a couple of weeks of arriving at Terania Creek, we heard of Forest Commission plans to log Terania Creek and we found out that the plans were to log all the millable timber and then to clear fell arrest and burn it. When you look at the beauty of the place, how can you not fight for it? I always wonder why do people feel that it's hopeless? It's obvious that you have to keep going. We all had a very strong commitment to the forest and everything else because, well, I mean, that's why we were here. And Terania Creek really clarified that. The council was on our back saying, what are you doing there? You never asked for permission to build these houses. You don't have building permits. Or we're gonna knock the whole place down. And what was so wonderful about that time was that that didn't phase us in the least. Really quite nice of them to, to give us an outside threat to pull us together. The state government, of course, stepped in and said, no, these people do get to be here. And the whole multiple occupancy act was passed. But the council, it wasn't quite the end for them. And so they put a demolition order on this house and one other house on the farm because we didn't have a wall. I'm incredibly grateful to live here. My children are just marvellous. I couldn't wish for anything more. I'm so proud of them and I love them so much. And I'm so happy that I've brought them up in this environment where they've had other adults to relate to, all sorts of skills to learn from other people and a whole range of peers to play with. A strong aspect of the festival was um, religious groups of Krishnas and uh, divine lighters and all these groups who were there were processions, pageantry, uh, music, candles. And uh, this has become part of the sort of the whole uh, cultural centre that Nimbin has in terms of rallies and events that are held here. There has been this invasion of artists and craftspeople, a whole myriad group of visual and performance artists and filmmakers all over the years, and even though it's a one-street village, because of the happenings, the festivals, the events, the concerts, very, very large events which bring together often very different forms of artists in terms of visual and performance artists, having exhibitions in conjunction with dance concerts and live music and cabaret and theatre. And it's, once again, it's this melting pot. Oh, yes, beautiful. Brothers and sisters, we'd like you to understand from Aboriginal point of view, all we ask is please understand you're in somebody else's country. The people in this country, those people in that country, they have a set of values and standards and morals that they live by. John C. asked Prakanti Palo, this Thai Buddhist monk, to come up and give retreats up here. People around Nimmin, they were really, some people anyway, were really looking for something. 
they were really trying to find something, some spiritual path or something. I felt a happiness that uh, uh, I'd never felt before, a very deep happiness, and it, it, I felt a compassion for sort of all sentient beings for the first time, I think. It's so important that we have the wise men and women who've experienced these things. It's not enough to read it in books or to have an intellectual understanding. It's that real experience that you can transmit and share. And the important thing that we've really achieved here is a very conscious, conscious work towards uh, protecting the environment. We managed to convince this go state government to, uh, to uh, not log rainforest and uh, that's been a tremendous achievement that uh, has inspired other people right throughout Australia. The awareness we generated rippled out and became a turning point in many of our lives. From Terrania Creek, people went out all over Australia and the world to the Franklin River, the Daintree Rainforest, to protest nuclear warships and the bomb, to Borneo, the Pacific, South America, Siberia, Bosnia, Tibet and East Timor. Many people whose feet became entangled in Mother Earth have dedicated their lives to her defence ever since. What about your own hopes and dreams and visions? What are they? I want to save the world. <laughs> it's pretty easy, isn't it? I might even do it tomorrow. Um, 